Okay guys, so one of the first things uh, that I sort of think is like an everyday essential and a lot of people just go and buy the best and most expensive stuff of it um, and that's down to uh, say for instance Royals. Uh, I keep my Royals in a racking system and I use paper towel. Uh, a lot of people use um, plain unprinted paper. My only problem with plain unprinted paper is this is all it seems to do is just stick to everything. Uh, as soon as it gets wet or dirty, it just sticks to everything. I don't find it that absorbent. Um, and then it gives a hell of a smell. A hell of a smell. Um, I just don't find it for me. Some people do, some people don't. For me, I use paper towel, as I say. Uh, I tend to use um, either the Blitz roll, the blue type roll, plenty, or even um, as the Walmart do a version of theirs and to be fair I'll get whatever's on the cheapest. They're all round about the same sort of quality of tissue paper. Um, I've got a piece here. Um, as you can see it's, it's decent thick durable tissue. It's not your everyday tissue. Um, it absorbs really well and it holds the moisture very well. I find that also with those when it comes to cleaning them up, no matter how wet that tub is, it comes up and you very rarely have to sit there scraping away for ages. Uh, so you have a quick scrape round, spray down, wipe down and you're done, you're ready to go. With my hatchlings, again, white version, thick tissue again, uh, whether it be plenty or whether it be um, the Regina, that sort of stuff. Again, I always go for a thicker quality. Um, I don't go for the cheap everyday, whatever you find cheapest. Um, so in that aspect, I do sort of shoot myself in the foot. I don't go for the cheapest of the cheap, but I also then go for the cheapest of the best quality. And it's just about being smart and being savvy and looking around. You never know what you're gonna find. And it's always worth that hunt. Then all I do is I buy in bulk. It is always worth buying in bulk. I buy these, I don't know, usually about 10 a time. Same with the blue rolls. I usually buy them in about 10 a time, just for the point that offers don't last that long. So it's always best to keep them rolling. And <clears throat> next up, I'd say silly little things that you're gonna use every day. So for instance, water. Most people have got their own reptile rooms and have their own uh, taps and sinks and that in their room. I don't. Uh, as you know, mine are jotted around my house, in and out bedrooms, stuff like that. Um, water butt, a pound. Can't beat it. Fill it up to the max. It does most of the water on my rolls, just in one go. Um, so it's messing about back and forth, back and forth. And then all I do, I just use this here for emptying. So I'll stick that down. Chuck me dirty into there, get my spray bottle, quick spray out, wipe out, water back in. Done. Just saves so much time and effort. Then I just empty this once. As we all know, everybody's never got time. I am always on the go. Uh, so if I can save myself time, I'll save myself time. Next up, again, spray bottles. Um, the normal death will spray. Um, I always swear by this stuff just to clean out with um, weekly and then I use my F10 for a deep clean uh, where it's a good scrub each tub um, and I give them a good old F, um, good old F10 in then um, and I buy that in the undiluted you know the double top ones um, but again not squirt ball again a pound you can't beat it at the end of the day it's all right going out and buying these bottles that are like six and seven pounds because they're thick or whatever else I could buy six or seven of them. Uh, I've had this bottle a year. All right, I should throw it away soon and get myself a new one. But it's cost me a pound, not six, seven pound. So it's always worth having a hundred round. Again, on about water bottles. Pump bottle, misty. I use this a lot with my frogs, um, my Pac-Man frog and also my hermit crab. Obviously the hermit crab needs high humidity inside so does the frog. Uh, 
I do use it for misting my rolls as well uh, when the humidity is not high enough, um, especially now coming into the winter because we have a oil filled rag upstairs, um, so it does get quite dry up there. So we use this just to keep everything moist um, and keep a bit of humidity up there. Um, just to, especially around shedding time, it gives them that bit extra coping to, to actually shed. Uh, right, what's next? <clears throat> Tubs. I'm not talking big tubs, uh, big tubs in my eyes, you just hunt for your bargains to be honest, uh, there's a company called Ryman uh, that are quite cheap, there's also your Facebook groups, there's people on Facebook uh, that actually deal in uh, really useful tubs and stuff like that, they even make um, a version of really useful tubs with not really useful tubs uh, that are good quality and just as cheap. Um, so it's always worth having a look around to see what you can find, but again these I use these some hatchling royals, and as you can see, they're not small tubs. Uh, they are seven litre, 1.5 gallon uh, shoe boxes, storage boxes. These are from uh, good old Poundland, and these come in of different varieties. I use these um, straight in my rack. I actually built a rack. I'll actually do an update one of the days on the hatchling rack. I actually built a hatchling rack to suit these type of tubs. So they're lidless um, with just a little gap. Absolutely perfect. <clears throat> Other version of those are what I used for my incubation, which I found out this year was absolutely brilliant. And it didn't keep the humidity too high, it didn't keep it too low. I never had a problem with dripping. I never had to touch them pretty much. I put my eggs in, get my vermiculite down, all done. Never had to mess with them again. The only thing I swore by, and getting there's a few tips off people is this stuff here um, they call it egg crate um, it's actually mosaic tile um, backing um, it is sticky on one side as you can see it's just slightly sticky um, but it's great just to keep that contact off from the vermiculite so thank you vermiculite in good dousing of water not too much so when you get the squeeze it just drips out bang your egg crate on top bang your eggs on top of that at the end of the day, if you've got um, eggs that are single or whatever else, having that egg crate as well also gives you the opportunity to pop a couple of straws in, stop them rolling around, um, pegs, whatever you're going to use. Some people use wooden sticks, that sort of thing. I personally don't use wooden sticks, and the reason being is because they tend to get mould on them. Um, so I don't use anything like that, so it's plastic pegs. Um, straws, that sort of things. Um, always cut the sides so nothing's touching the roof. So the last thing you want it to do is run down the straw and then try to touch an egg or anything like that um, and send an egg bad. But again, for a pound, you don't mind buying them in bulk. And <clears throat> the lidded ones, I brought 20 of them. The lidless ones, I brought 30 of them in bulk because obviously they're seasonal. And a lot of things you'll find with most places is everything is seasonal. So you have to buy in bulk. It's the only sort of way of being savvy with your money. Um, again, sat things down for the vermiculite. Now, this stuff, um, and I mean, this is a 10 litre bag, I think it is. Uh, five litre bag. Now, they do these in, uh, I think it's a 10 litre bag at B&Q. Um, I suppose you guys have to kind of be Home Depot. Um, they are, if I remember rightly, are about four pound, oh, near five pound to go. Uh, a pound. Grab them while they're there. Grab loads of them. You may look like a nutter at the till with arms full of vermiculite and arms full of tubs. And I think, God, what's he growing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Next thing you know, you've got the police around your house thinking you're a nutter. Um, but again, it's all about saving those pennies. Next thing, compressed cocoa. Cocoa fibre. Um, I've seen these in a variety of sizes and whatever else. Uh, most people will know that Exoterra do these up in a block, around about half the size. In my eyes, these actually swell more than the Exoterra, it's quite a lot more. Um, these give you an approximate of 10 litres. Now, I always check with these that they're different types because if you have an indoor one, they tend to be less, um, they have no harmful chemicals or anything like that in them. If they're outdoor, they tend to have chemicals on and stuff like that to keep slugs and all that sort of stuff off. Um, 
So it's always worth having a good look, um, reading through the instructions and stuff like that, making sure there's nothing in there. Um, with this one, it does say 95% cocoa peat, 5% sand and cocoa fibre. So with this, I know it's no chemicals, nothing like that. There's not going to be any um, problems with any of my animals because of using this. So it's always worth having a good look and checking the uh, sort of ingredients as such of what's in them. Um, again, a pound, you can't beat it. Buy it in full, grab it, grab it. I swear by this stuff, I use this for my crabs, I use this for my frogs. Um, I also use it in my hides for my sort of corns, um, just for when they're having their sheds. I tend to go in there and just use their little hides just to uh, have like a, a split log, um, like rock. Just put a bit in there just to help them shed. It's fantastic. Royals again, shed time, as I say about shedding. I use the mister, yeah, but I'll also, if I know they're struggling and I've had a bad shed the time before, I'll get their little house. Um, now I use this here, cat litter tray. Okay, again, a pound, can't beat it. What I'll do is I'll actually flip that upside down and I'll put a layer just in the bottom. I'll moist it up and they'll go in there to help them shed. Sometimes I'll even put, um, a good friend of mine showed me actually, um, Gavin Atkins from uh, Balls to You. I'll even put a little sponge in there, a moist sponge in with the, um, in with the uh, cocoa fibre, just to help that moisture and also to give them something to rub on. <sighs> I don't think you can beat that in my eyes. Right, let's crack on. <laughs> uh, girl named Charlotte online or no, um, our Facebook, her laugh, uh, we go on about these every time I buy them, but these glass bowls. Now, if anyone could work out what they are, I'll tell you anyway, but they are goo pots. Um, they are a, a cake, basically. Um, sort of like a cheesecake. Come on, pop. I buy these, <laughs> as soft as it sounds. I tell the missus I buy them for her because I'm treating her. Um, I buy them myself in bulk for my hatchlings. So, these, I usually buy them in when they're on special, either 150 or two pounds, and that's a pack of two. Now for me, that's an absolute bargain, because not only are you getting the bowls that you need for a pound each, sometimes 75 pence each, but you're also getting the dessert as well. So, you're happy, and your partner's happy. Win-win. Again, so things like these, batteries. Batteries for things like these, stats. Yeah, and whether that be your hydros or your temps, they both require batteries. Again, these, eBay, have a look on. You can get 10 of these, 10 of these for less than 10 pound. Grab them all day long. Obviously they need batteries. Buy them in bulk, eBay, um, Gumtree, or even your pound stores, or sell them in bulk for a pound. Shot glasses. Now all of you might think I've absolutely gone round a twist. Shot glasses for me are absolutely essential for sandbowers. Sandbowers need small tubs. They need something light. They need something that's not gonna crush them if they decide to bury under it. They also need a very small amount that if they do knock it over, it's not gonna cause a massive amount of humidity within their little tubs. Now I only keep them in as babies, regular tubs. Now, these are, I think they're 1.5s, something like that. Yeah, 1.5s I think they are, um, breakfast stubs. Now those, with obviously a little one in the corner, and I use a thing called Megazord. Nice and deep, so it doesn't knock it over. If you're worried, and you think that's too much, I will get a hot iron, and I'll actually chop these in half with a hot iron. Yeah, with a soldering iron. Chop them in half. And then I'll get a piece of sandpaper and rub and make sure there's no sharp edges. But again, tube of those. I think there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 for a pound. You just can't beat it. Grab them, grab them, grab them. I have stacks of those upstairs, and I mean stacks. There are probably a thousand, probably more in a cupboard upstairs. 
just because I was massively buying them. Because I use these every two weeks, I chuck one away. I don't keep them. I'll use them once, wipe them, swill them, refill, week after, they're thrown. So, grab them, grab them while you can. Other things. When you're making records, and you're keeping breeding records, or whether it be feeding records, shedding, pooing, all that sort of stuff, these are, what do they class them as on here? Record cards, as simple as it says, record cards. Now, there's hundreds of these, they come in loads of different colours if you want to get fancy. Um, as soft as it sounds, <coughs> blue ones I use for my boys, the green ones I use for the boys, the pink ones and the yellow ones I use for girls. So, win-win. These, again, I got these on sale at, um, I think it's a place called, it used to be Staples, I think it's called Office Outlet now, something stupid like that. Um, and I paid £1.50 for them. All day long, go for it. Bulbs. Now, off subject of like breeding royals and all that sort of stuff, um, breeding the sandbars, that sort of thing. <clears throat> I always have um, a spec converter bulb. And the reason I have this is because there's always that chance you'll get to a short and a bulb will blow. And you can guarantee it's not the right one. <laughs> the amount of times I've gone up and gone to change a bulb and it's not the right bloody fitting. So I keep one of each. Um, the other one is actually in the VIP at the moment, um, just as easy as I can bother to take it out. But I have a bayonet screwed and I also have the other way around, the screw to bayonet. Now again, I pick these up. Um, I actually got these from a place called Wilkins and Wilco's and they were I think they're 45 pence or 50 pence each and I brought bulk of them just why not tongs now these are the baby tongs I use for the lip lens uh, my big ones upstairs are just normal reptile tongs um, these are very similar to the uh, types you get in the reptile shops um, and they're about five six pounds something like that now, believe it or not, I got these from a garden centre and they were actually labelled as something like a delicate seed dispenser. <laughs> something crazy like that. Um, and I just happened to notice them. And they were £1.69, £1.70. Now, the saving there is shocking. You know what I mean? So it's always worth having a look round. Your missus may think you're out of your tree when you go into all these different shops. And you pick up loads of different things and you hunt around for different things. But you've got to be savvy. You have to be savvy. Hand job. Now, I don't have an absolutely huge collection. Um, in comparison to some people, I have a minute collection. Uh, so, I buy in little tubs like this. Now, I buy these in bulk again. And they are four for £1.50, I think they are. And little adult, little Aldi, all those type of um, how to put it, like the Swedish um, type uh, supermarkets. They always seem to do cheap hand gels and stuff like that, and they're brilliant. And the great thing about this is this one is aloe vera, and I tell you what, it's a lot better than some. You get some hand gels and they stink. I mean, they may do the job, but they stink. Uh, these, fantastic. Um, I love this stuff, I really do. And as again, I buy in bulk. Okay, again, when I was on about scraping and cleaning tubs in, wallpaper scraper. So if you do get any like poo or tissue that's stuck to the bottom of the tub and you're having a game getting it off, just sitting there trying to scrub with tissue or whatever with a sponge, you scrape that. Again, pound place two for a pound, can't beat it. Now I went into uh, Wilco's, I went into Asda, I went into uh, Pound Stretch Extra, I went into Tesco, um, I even went into B&Q, a place like our home base. I could not find one of these for a pound, let alone two. The luckiest I could find one was two pound, for one, for one. So the saving there is amazing. Okay guys, that's it. That's everything. Oh, no, again, candling. Candling babies. Okay, candling babies. This one, even doubles, 
There's a little white knight. Don't really ever think I'll use it, but it's there. Okay, pound store. It even came with a battery. I mean, you can't beat that. <laughs> Remember, guys, you're not being cheap, you're being clever. At the end of the day, if you can produce top quality, good standard animals without breaking the bank, you can pass that saving on to your, your people um, and people who are buying from you and your customers. Um, and that's without hitting the market sort of thing. So it's not always about trying to beat every person at prices and doing this and doing that. It's just about saving your own pennies at the end of the day. No one's got money to throw around these days. Um, especially, I mean, or well, some people might be in a different situation to you and me. Um, I haven't got money to spend thousands of pounds on snakes uh, for like one snake. It just ain't, I ain't there yet. Um, and to start off, this is how I'm gonna do it. And I hope, I really hope this helps you guys. And if you can think of any other ideas, any savvy ideas, any money saving ideas that you think I've missed out, hit that comment down below. Let me know. As I say, I am always learning just like you guys. I'm completely new to this, the same as you guys. And I want you guys to learn with me. Come along the journey with me. So as always guys, no matter what I say, let's teach, not preach. Keep smiling, take care. Now I'm not a writer. Okay.